All right. I'd like to introduce you to the Canada Masters game versus New Zealand Master Women game, uh, game number 49. Um, wherever you are around the world, uh, here we are, Arnold and... And Callum. Callum. Callum from New Zealand is going to be speaking for the Master ladies and... Me I'll as an Aussie, we'll do it's our been a while since I've been in New Zealand, but I'll uh, I'll do my best, <laughs> and I'll do my best for the Canadian ladies. So um, we've got three minutes to game time. Very soon, we'll go through the team lists and uh, talk about. I can at least go through the Canadian ladies. Number one, Vanessa Swinky. Uh, number two, Christine Dennis. Number six, Clarice Bador. Number seven, Terry Pettifer. Eight, Sophie Ghost. Nine, Danuta Zaranko. Number 10, Bonnie Chan. 11, Kareen Desol. 12, Armada Ann Swansky. Sorry if I've got that wrong. And number 13, the captain, Julie Messman. And then in the New Zealand team, we've got uh, uh, number 10, Angela Whitman. Number 6, Bridget Cassidy. Number 2, Julia Scamoni. Apologies if I've uh, got names wrong there. Number nine, Inga Van Dalen Van Oors, the vice captain. Number seven, Jane Fahey. Number eight, Jane Nevin Wolf. Number three, Jenny Catron. Number four, Kate Devaney. Number twelve, Casey Miller. Kelsey Miller, sorry. And number thirteen, Rebecca Brosnan. Well, I watched uh, one of these matches earlier today, and all I know is, is Jenny Catron. She scored a lot of goals, so. Do you know anything about it? She's a little speedster on the wing. No, I don't. Like I said, it's been a long time since I've been in New Zealand. And so uh, I know these are the Masters women and they've probably been playing a long time. But uh, a lot of them are unfamiliar to me. But it sounds like she's going to be a bit of a danger player for Canada. Yes, definitely, I think. And uh, the Canadian Masters, look, they've all been playing for a while. They know the game. So this this will be a real good tussle. I think it'll be tight to start with until... Um, maybe New Zealand with their strength starts finding some holes in uh, the defence but um, yeah we're only a minute, minute and a half away and uh, both teams are in their chance and uh, building up their energy ready for this match Do you know uh, how these teams have been going so far in this tournament? I think New Zealand's been doing quite well Yes, I think New Zealand just lost to France. I think New Zealand France and Australia are the leading um, and the strongest Masters women team but um that's just at this early stage that I've seen in the first day and a half. So um, New Zealand has lost just by one goal to um, France. And France has also beaten Australia by one goal. So okay. um, both those three teams are certainly the ones leading the way. Um, but, hey, it's a long tournament and these are masters. So, you know, the fitter team down the stretch and the younger team down the stretch can certainly change... Uh, uh, results very quickly. That's all right, they can. And in the Masters women, it's just a straight round robin to start with, isn't it? Not like the elite women that have yes. a, a seeded uh, set up. Which is very confusing, even for me, a commentary, and I've played a lot of worlds. So, yes, but we're almost at a start. Got about so. 10 seconds to go. All right, teams are ready. And we're away. New Zealand first there to the strike. They're recycling possession really well and keeping this line drive pretty well up the middle of the court, which is standard uh, Kiwi spear sort of play. But Canada's managed to steal a puck, maybe illegally. Let's see what the referees call. Yes, illegally stole a puck. So... New Zealand's got the puck two-thirds way up the court, maybe nine, ten metres away from uh, the Canadian goal mouth. And then, of course, we've got New Zealand in black that are playing from left to right on your screens. Again, working really hard to keep possession in the New Zealand team. Good numbers on the bottom. And they've made a line break right down to the wing, and they're right onto the goal mouth. Great defence to start with by Canada. And then that puck's in the goal tray. We'll see what the refs are calling. Uh, that is a 
No. Canada advantage puck, so New Zealand getting pushed back there for obstruction, I think it was. Obstruction or maybe a gloving into the goal, but either way, Canadian can breathe a sigh of relief on that one. Now Canada's looking Canada here. straight to the sub bench for uh, a little aid. And as you see, they're recycling players. And you've got fresh Canadian ladies coming straight back in. Mm -hmm. And that's why their push is so strong. Good tussle on the wall there. Canada pushing through that first line Number of defence. making a good line break. But I think there was a hooking by the Canadian lady just previous to that. So New Zealand are just ro rotating some players in this break. And we'll have the puck. You saw that hooking? Yeah. Yeah. Here we go, New Zealand lining up, probably driving straight towards the goal tray, I'd imagine. I reckon they're going to... Whoa, they're going straight up going the up wall. Going up the wall, okay, interesting. Interesting, yes. Still going up the back wall there. And they're still making good ground. Great line drive. Now they're swinging it to attack the centre of the goal. And they're still going. Oh, there was a body stop there. Looks like that's been Picked called up. up, although it is against New Zealand for a stick infringement there. So Canada getting a bit of relief. Here we go with Canada. Probably going straight back to the wall, but it was a bad pass. And... Uh, the Kiwis have been straight onto it and moving the puck nicely. And let's see if they can get in a goal. No, good clearance by Canada. Canada's support there across the goal tray was really, really well done. But it looks like there's a change of possession now. The Kiwis have got it. But another infringement. No, no, it's no, still play, still going. We saw everyone hit the surface there. <laughs> All right, this time players stopped now, uh, and again a Canadian puck. So some really good attacking pressure by New Zealand in these first four minutes, but uh, yet to convert. Good defence from Canada to thwart all that energy that uh, New Zealand has thrown at him. Here we go. Here we go, New Zealand on the switch there. And a good change back by the Canadian fullback. Managed to link well with their wingers. Well, it was an illegal take by the Canadian uh, backman. So again, New Zealand can reset. Getting a couple of fresh players in from the sub bench there as well. Couple three. There's a bit of energy. Great flick well, through there from go. the advantage puck. This is looking a lot better. Coming into the centre of the pool. This is the danger area. Position. Good defence from Canada. It's always a little bit hard to see what's going on when it's on the far side of the pool, yeah, especially in, the in that shade. Yeah, in the afternoons it makes it a little bit hard, but fortunately... Here we go, good run coming through. This could go the whole way. Right up on the back wall on the corner of the tray there. Great, strong defence. And then there it is. Let's see what the refs say. We've got one calling no goal. Here we go, Chief Ref calling something out here. Illegal subbing. I think New Zealand actually might have had seven in the water for that period of play. Uh, 
I did say there were a couple of subs, but three of them did jump in. I'm not quite sure what's going on there. We've got one New Zealand player heading to the they've sin bin. Got, they've got five and one coming back from the sub bench. So I think it was an illegal substitution. So Canada with a bit of a power play now, one player up. Let's see if they can take advantage of that. Julia. There you go, Julia out for one minute from New Zealand team. I think that's a token um, penalty. <laughs> She's the last one into the team, so the first one out. First one out, yeah. Sometimes when it's just a, a general team uh, infringement, it's just uh, unlucky if you're the one that ends up having to go to the sin yeah, bin. You may not have been the one that caused the penalty. But you'll take it on the chin. Yeah, someone's got to take that punishment. And usually the captains pick a forward, so that way their defence is not uh, rattled in any way. So, again... Um, I might be going any, anywhere near Julia for uh, a fine on the presentation night for a, dr for a drink. Canada here really preferring this wall next to their sub bench. And they're in a power play, so I don't know why they're doing that, but they're making a line break now. And um, number eight's having a good old run. But all the support was uh, New Zealand there. And in, in a bit of a dangerous spot now because New Zealand can very easily get fresh players in. I just saw Julia come back in, so obviously we're six on six now. That's her on the wall fighting, so she came in fresh. And um, and looked like there was going to be a lot of uh, open yes. water ahead, but unfortunately got called back by the I rest. I see that one of the Kiwi girls grabbed the, grabbed the boundary. I think the rule is you're allowed to place your hand against, against the wall, but you can't grab right. the top correct. of the wall to anchor yourself in place. That's correct. So here's Canada driving towards the middle of the pool. Uh, but Ooh, it's just spilled out the back there, and there's lots of open water ahead of them. Yes. She's got her forward there. And I this think could go all the way. Hard, I think they're going to have a hard time to catch this girl. Bounce it off the wall. And, and that's in the tray. The referee's there calling a goal. Yeah, uh, I think so that, that is was, official. I think that was number two, Julia Shimoni. <laughs> Come straight off the sub bench. Great, um, fresh legs and made that fast run and finished off. <laughs> I don't think the referees knew who it was, so it was definitely Julia. Yeah, we haven't... Uh, oh, there we go. Number 10 up on to, screen now. We might have to fight it out with Angela, I reckon, Julia. <laughs> <coughs> so New Zealand there first to the strike again and choosing to go straight up the middle, but uh, has lost position over to Canada now. New Zealand probably really wanting to keep the pressure on. They don't want to uh, relax now that they're one up. Still five minutes left in this first half. I don't think uh, the Kiwi there we go into the will ever relax. Uh, she's looking for her offside forward or, or back there, yes. but unfortunately went straight to Canada. Well, they've still got possession, and they're still working their way there. So the, the puck is in the tray, but I think it was called up uh, before that. So we'll just see what the refs are. It looks like it's a Canada puck. I'm not quite sure what the infringement was, though. And a though. player is going to the bench. Yeah, we've got another player into the sin bin from New Zealand. Ooh, that was a body stop. Close to the face. I wonder if the rest yeah, picked looks. that up. Play is continuing, so uh, no stoppage there. Canada finding some open water. New Zealand doing well to shut it down and hold it up well, on the wall. A good defensive move there. And a great straight from the sub bench. But no, there's been an infringement against... Canada, so again, New Zealand's got the puck, 
slightly forward of midcourt. Um, number 11 is out for a minute. So it's um, Zoe Firth. Uh, so it's go. out for two minutes with one minute left. The apple doesn't fall far from the tree. Here he goes, a strong drive coming from New Zealand. They're up into that goal tray. Lots of numbers on the bottom and that puck is into the tray. And that's with five. We've got a risk called out being called. But I think it's going to go. We've got one ref calling obstruction against Canada, so they must not have been playing any sort of advantage for some reason. Maybe the refs have seen something else in the water to, to negate the advantage. A goal was scored and then giving the puck anyway. So it's New Red Zealand's puck run. right in front of the goal tray there. Uh, lots of bodies on the ground there and as they come up we can see the puck in the tray. Well, they didn't lose that goal for long. So um, well done the Kiwis and we're looking like Zoe's not far from uh, getting back in the water, probably just after, uh, yes, it'll be basically in resumption of play. Goal by Kelsey Miller. So is Zoe Firth... Rob Firths. I'm not related. sure. There's, there's a few Firths in the New Zealand underwater hockey scene. I know there's a, I think there's a brother and sister um, from the South Island, or at least uh, went to Dunedin University. Rob Firth but has been a, a very experienced referee for New Zealand for many, many years. He became a referee because he was so dirty. He knew all the rules and how to break them, so therefore <laughs> became a fantastic referee. So maybe Zoe is related because, uh, yeah, the apple doesn't fall far from the tree here. New Zealand locking it up on the wall here. We've got just Close. over a minute left in the first half. Close to their sub bench, so it's a very safe place to recycle your players. But Canada have, yep, these fresh players have come straight back in. And they're going to go hard, but no, an infringement. Got a call here Stop against against New Zealand. Another player out for a minute. Hey, I know her. Sounds like Firth is out for another minute. I know and we've got a white timeout being called. So timeout by Canada. I know my Firths. <laughs> So with a power play situation, 44 seconds to go, really smart time out by Canada and their coach. And they have hopefully um, created a plan that they can execute in the next 44 seconds and score a goal. So let's see what they've organised and if they can execute it. So you'd think Canada here would be looking to take it away from that wall and attack the, the centre of the goal tray, also getting away from that New Zealand sub-bench. So and Certainly the way the players have set up, it looks that way. We'll see where they go. New Zealand doing well there, getting position straight away, taking it to that wall. Still in position, marching up that wall further. Great work, girls. And a confirmation there on screen that it was Zoe Firth that was uh, back in the sin bin for a further minute. So double, she's double confirmation. They haven't written her name up because she's related to a referee. So they've just put the number up. She seems to be really making herself at home there. Yeah. <laughs> Here we go, that's half time, so uh, 
Ref swooping in to pick up that puck, and the teams will be swapping ends. So a good start by New Zealand. Um, they really uh, set the tone of the match, scored the goals with with uh, good dri line drives, support on the bottom, and um, yeah, they played very smart so far, so they deserve their lead. And um, yeah, as for Canada, I'm guessing uh, the coach has got a few words to say just to refocus the ladies and see if they can make inroads um, on the scoreboard. Yeah, I think on attack, Canada needs to just try and keep position within their team. Uh, they're sort of getting towards halfway and then uh, losing uh, position. I guess New Zealand being quite strong there in the centre of the pool. If they can try and recycle it back to their, their forwards or back to their backs and uh, keep that sort of rotation system going, I think they'll get a, a lot a lot of F well, value from that. Yeah. Totally. It, this game, if you can keep possession, if you can communicate, and I say possession is communication, communicating with your teammates is knowing where they are and successfully communicating with a flick to them. So if you can get a puck from one player to another and uh, keep possession, that's good communication between players. And that's what we're trying to do. And the team that does that the best and keeps possession the longest, law of, law of averages, you're going to end up with a better score line at the end of the day than the opposition. And although it's a uh, non-verbal sport, there is a lot of communication that happens under the water, even just uh, knowing sort of how your how your team passes the puck to you, where they pass it to you, are they trying to put it in front of you or behind you, can give you an indication as to what they're seeing that you can't uh, because, you know, you might have your head focused on wherever the puck is and you can't see the players that are up and around you. Let alone the trust of knowing where your play will be without looking. Yeah. And, um, you know, all this is built um, in, the, you know, in the furnace of uh, top-level hockey. Um, but a lot of countries don't have that competition that allows them to play together against uh, honest opposition. So this is where some of the countries like New Zealand and others and France have top-line competitions that, um, that they can play in and, and build that communication. Anyway, we're looking like we're only 10 seconds away from the start of the second half. New Zealand and still with five players. Uh, they'll have five players for the first 15 seconds of this second half. I think I saw Zoe Firth asking for a cushion on her chair since she might get there back again. So um, that was quite resourceful from her. New Zealand again opting to go straight through the Canadian forward line off the strike there. Uh, they've retained play. position. A spear play. Really trying to the back's crank really up support. the pressure. The backs really support the forwards and... This is going to go the whole way, really. You can see the, the puck flicked into the goal tray there, but it was called up just before that. So we've got a gloving infringement, I think, against New Zealand. But a great effort. That's exactly uh, almost executed perfectly. A goal on the strike. Back to six on six now as well. Canada going straight towards the opposite wall away from the sub bench here. New Looks Zealand like position has changed, but uh, called up. Maybe an illegal steal. Yep, chopping. We're back into play. Again, an arm wrestle at this early part of uh, the half, the second half. Making a great line drive there, that uh, New Zealand winger. Number 11, Corrine. No, number 11, Zoe Firth. Well, naturally, she's so fresh, hardly played so far this match. New Zealand there getting the puck back really into the centre of the goal tray, but again, refs calling this up. Another pressure, pressure reliever there for Canada. Yeah. 
So glove and call there against Canada. New Zealand will be lining up for, for an attack here. They've really recycled their players just now, so you'll see a bunch of their players swimming in from the sub bench. <coughs> a subbing infringement again by New Zealand. This is not the New Zealand I've seen before. They're getting rattled one way or the other. Subbing infringements is uh, two in a match. So that infringement, I think, will get turned over. No, 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 still saying New Zealand puck there. But they are a player down now with Julia again, copping the unlucky, uh, being the unlucky ones heading to the sub bench. But at least her chair has a, has a pillow in it now, so um, she won't be minding that. All right, this time we've got a breaking foul against Canada, so they were advancing past the line set by the referee before New Zealand took that advantage. So they'll get pushed back again, uh, and New Zealand get to retake that puck. More drinks on uh, Julia's behalf. Great there we go, by. straight into the goal tray there. 5v6, that's a great effort by... Um, only and 12 seconds left, so Julia will come in probably on the restart of this... Uh, Refs are confirming that goal from the surface as well. That goal there being attributed to Kate, and I think that makes it 3-0 now to New Zealand. And then it looks like Canada is actually having a player sent out. I'm not sure if that is a delayed Sinbin from the previous breaking foul, but they now have uh, Danuta there on the sideline. So this will be interesting. New Zealand with yeah, six players in the player. water now and, and Canada down to five. And there's Zoe. I know that number, number 11. Seen it so much on the screen. She's going to finish this. A big flick there to the goal tray. Just stopped a couple short, but there was a forward there to finish that off. There you go. Refs confirming that goal on the screen now too. Number 12, Kelsey Miller. We haven't got long for Danuta to come back in. She'll probably come back in on the restart as well. Here we go, Canada winning this strike and uh, choosing to go towards the far side, flicking it off to their offside forward, looking to set up a drive. Uh, we've got a stick infringement against New Zealand, so Canada getting the advantage puck here. Uh, back to six on six as well. Canada's still driving up that far wall. You can see lots of players down on the bottom there. We've got an advantage being played, it seems like. And now they're calling it up. So I think it's probably against New Zealand as uh, it got called just as New Zealand started to make that break. The ref there just giving a team warning for uh, barging or obstruction. So New Zealand will have to be careful not to let too many more infringements go or they'll start to lose a few more players. So 
So Canada setting up well here. Lots of players on the bottom. Uh, and dangerous getting the puck into the middle of the pool there. But it is New Zealand in possession. Bringing it into that defensive corner. And there's a reliever for New Zealand. There's a stick infringement against Canada. So New Zealand will be able to set themselves up well to take this puck out of their defensive zone. Not a lot of pressure coming from Canada on that free puck. Lots of uh, time for New Zealand to swim up before looking to flick off to one of their players. Their ability to keep possession is really uh, paying dividends for them. And we can see a big swim there. So it's a one-on-one -on -one in front of the goal tray. Just trying to push through that last line. And then and we've got a ref call. So we'll see what it is that they're seeing. And the ref signaling a goal there. So they must have seen the same thing as Arnie. And we've got a New Zealand timeout here. That last goal uh, on screen was attributed to number zero, which isn't actually on our team sheet, so I'm not sure if that was just the refs unsure of who actually scored it or, or perhaps a penalty goal. Very even strike there. Both teams arrive at almost at the same time, but possession going to Canada. New Zealand with lots of numbers there, though. Big pass through the middle there. And that's New Zealand driving down the back wall with a big flick, and that's into the goal. New Zealand just recycling it through to their backs who are taking it out wide, looking for that space, looking for some open water to start swimming. And there it is. But uh, the ref calling up a gloving foul against New Zealand.
Canada taking this quickly, but the oh, I thought the flick was almost uh, knocked down by New Zealand, but Canada still in position up on that far wall. Puck just spilling through to the other side onto the New Zealand forwards stick uh, and looking to drive that towards the goal. And again onto that back wall. Some big numbers there by New Zealand. Perfect offside forward there. Uh, but Well done, Julia. And yeah, perfect position by that offside forward, just sitting on that corner of the goal tray. So as soon as the puck spilled out, they can just pick it up and put it straight into the goal. So two and a half minutes left. Uh, again, New Zealand coming in, just winning that strike, but then a strong drive from Canada straight back through the middle. New Zealand looking to relieve the pressure by going wide off to that far wall. Uh, some good numbers there on the bottom by New Zealand as well. You can see they've really got it boxed in on all sides, continuing to just march it up the pool. And now switching towards some open space, getting off to that offside back. And then straight in front of the goal. That's perfect uh, support. There's a great team goal there by New Zealand. Goal there for number seven. So Jane Fay. Maybe fitness is a factor here. Um, I'm sure the Kiwi girls are well prepared. Um, and they do look the fitter side. And uh, maybe a little bit of fitness now affecting uh, Canada's... Uh, effectiveness yeah the Kiwis are looking just that little bit sharper now on the bottom and um, as you see now they still look just as fresh as when they started and that normally doesn't happen in the Masters category in fact it never happens in the Masters category be as fresh at the end of a game as you are in the start so well done to the Kiwi girls for their preparation. And a stick infringement there against New Zealand. Of course, in the last two minutes of every game, the clock does stop for any ref calls. Uh, so you can see 42 seconds left. That won't restart until the uh, play resumes. And that was brought in to stop time wasting by teams that had a tight lead, like a 1 0 lead, and wanting to blow the last two minutes, maybe in a defensive quarter or an offensive corner. So. Strong 45 swim there off the wall by good. New Zealand. But thwarted and stopped by the Canadian defence. And then again, just looking to swim that 45 off the wall, but stopped there by the refs. With uh, 16 seconds left, Canada will have one last play here. It's a great knockdown there by New Zealand, who will be looking to just take position and see out this game. Five seconds left. And that was a rest call, but that will also be uh, full time. Final score there was 8-0 to New Zealand, uh, Masters women against Can Canada Masters women.